So I was uh, selling my house, Dana, and we had an offer and the guy goes, uh, we'll give you half cash and half bitcoins oh interesting yeah oh my sons would say take it take i know but i got scared i would have taken a little bit in bitcoins but i don't know because then it got into like we can get you a condo in the metaverse a really good one that's just being built i'm like right i know the metaverse I'm in the are good we, street in the metaverse are we behind or what I know, we gotta I get feel, in the metaverse i feel stupid i live in the regular verse i know this physical world is kind of a drag i just want to put the goggles on sit back light up something have a little liquid encouragement <laughs> and just live my life yeah i'm getting stressed world. every day but i do like seeing you in the Wall Street Journal, and other, I, you know, I read a lot of newspapers online, and I see your face, David Spade sells, and then it's just this gigantic number, <laughs> so and I'm like, <laughs> it's kind of, it's a new world when everyone knows the square footage of your house, and they walk through it, and they go, oh, so that's where you sleep, that's where you eat your carrots. It's just definitely weird, and then everyone goes, how's the house going? Oh, strangers in the street, hey, did a visual tour of your house. I go, oh, gross. Hey, you know, the premise of people in show business is that all of us have the exact same goal to be as famous as possible. Sick. Like that is our goal. So mm. I haven't seen you around much lately. Yeah. You know, oh, my son, I still get this. I've been in the business 40 years. Yeah. My kids love you. <laughs> they're like, they're like eight, 13. <laughs> really? What about you? Ah, my kids love uh, you. I like don't I'm barely some know. Kind of Can clown? I get a picture? Because my kids say you're something. You know who's on Daryl Hammond? Daryl Hammond, one of the best impressionists ever. Yeah, long tenure at SNL. He had a great um, run. His, his Clinton, um, after the great late Phil Hartman, did him. And it was Clinton's second term. And Daryl's uh, take on it was very, it kind of owned it. He yeah. did the lascivious thing, but it wasn't grotesque. It was just very subtle. I do like mamas, you know. Had, he's so fun to talk to because he loves to talk process. You guys are going to talk about the process of, uh, you know, how do you come up with impressions? How do you do it? Do you copy other people? Do you take tricks? Do you make it your own? It's, it's so, it was so interesting because I don't do many and I was, I want to hear the whole situation. Anyway, yeah, it's interesting part of uh, comedy anyway. When you see someone do something, yeah. like I don't even like to really watch comedians because they may be doing something that I've, I've thought of and yeah. I'll think I'm copying them. Yeah. So with an impression, it's kind of the same thing when someone gets it out there first and does all the hooks, you know? Yeah, they find a hook that you don't find. You're like, oh, now it'll look like I took So I have that. to copy those hooks. Yeah. That's why I jumped quick with Biden, just yeah. to get that turf. And I don't see anybody trying to do Biden. Yeah, you get the blueprint of the hooks. I have new hooks, too. But talking with Daryl was really fun. I've noticed with people we interview, uh, there's a humility and kind of a uh, self-deprecating aspect. Yeah. And I kind of think that driven people... The reason they're so successful is, hey, you did this, 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 and this. They're like, yeah, we had the best Clinton. Then your your Dick Cheney was amazing. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really interesting because yeah. I guess it's part of drive is you never go, I arrived. You know, you, the, you people in our career have gotten that attitude and they were gone in like a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're ground, you have so many failures when you're doing this job that you just, it's so hard to get cocky because you just know there's another one around the corner. Well, I remember our former manager goes, some guys do this for money. That's okay. This is Brad Gray. Yeah. But you seem to do it because you want to do the, the funniest thing. I that is yeah. the truth. Well, yeah, we want this podcast to be good it, it, rather than, you know, it. it's a victory lap. It's called resting <laughs> on your laurels. You don't have to do anything new. I don't know. I mean, I like our friends Steve Martin and, and our friend Martin Short. Yeah. Doing an incredible half hour yeah. comedy on... Hulu. Uh, Cadence 13 produces this show. Oh, yeah, Cadence 13. Cadence 13, Cadence 13. Which I thought Sounds was. Sounds like a uh, space station. Yeah. Cadence 13, come in. I thought Cadence it was 13, a Korean come in. boy band. Korean boy band. Oh, yeah, you saw my their hits. Hey, girl. <laughs> and what you thinking, girl? <laughs> hey, podcast girl. Uh, Daryl Hammond is, um, he has an emotional story. He had a very interesting childhood, like a lot of us. And so we do kind of unpack that. And uh, we go into the process pretty deeply, and, and we admire some of our other impressionists, where their impressions are so good, we don't even want to try. All right, here's Daryl Hammond. Well, 
We're never going to use this one anyway, Dana. Never. There's not a chance. Oh, hey, Daryl. That's our number one request is Daryl Hammond. That's it. Get the guy who said live from New York more times than Dana Garno. Because <laughs> Carvey's so cocky about that live from New York stuff. Hey, by the way, Daryl, we're going to let you talk at the very end. But um, me yeah. and Dana talked the whole time. But uh, right. do you know... I didn't even know I was angry with you until just now because I never got to say live from New York. You didn't? Wow. Isn't that horrible? Daryl, how many times did you say it? Do you know? I heard it was in the 80s. I just heard you broke my record. I had people like, broke your record, man. I go, I didn't even know I had a record. I never even got close. Never got close to doing it. Well, it's because you had, now, mostly when you're the president, you get to do it a lot. So you did it a lot as Clinton- and then what were you doing it from 2000 to 2009 after Clinton got out? Um, let's see. Well, Clinton did twice and then um, Bush came in. So then I was playing Cheney. So I did it, I did it a lot as Cheney yeah. and, and, um, mm-hmm. and then there was about a year there where I was doing it a lot as Trump. So I think that's was Dana. <laughs> did Dana? Did did you ever go live from Gaga? It's by Gaga. I just eventually they didn't even know. I mean, well, the, the cue listen. the cue cards just were in Greek. <laughs> just said words like still just like la ga ba da ga. All my comedy is just that, <laughs> things that make no sense. Ga da ga 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 ga. <laughs> but one of the best uh, rhythms that I heard uh, as a guy doing a politician was uh, Daryl doing lockbox. Mm. I mean, that the way you said <laughs> as Al Gore, it was so lo- – you do it. <laughs> it oh, yeah, I did it a bunch. I did it a bunch as Gore. Um, lockbox. Yeah. Oh, shit. I can't remember. Let me see. How did that go? <clears throat> I'm going to put it in a lo- – it was just this guy, you know. Yeah, what did you what did you call Gore like a gay Forrest Gump? Forrest. I know I can't do that anymore. But I do I do think now I think of a Tennessee gentleman from like some kind of you know nineteen thirties movie, and it has nothing to do with a feminine or not. It's just a Tennessee. I do take umbrage, madam, with your nature, but it does come off like a just a Tennessee yeah, that's gentleman. Good, yeah, but. Um, it was very funny the way you would say, I put it in a lockbox. Those are the kind of things that make me happy. My, I mean, my brain you know, happy. I had been doing gore in the village. Um, I kept going up Comedy Cellar trying to figure out what's the angle on this fuck, this guy. And I couldn't find anything. Nobody. And, and we even did an update and no one even knew who, who gore was. <laughs> yeah, I know. Until the 2000 the debates. And then, of course, as mm-hmm. we're coming up to game time on Saturday around four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Game time. Downey comes in with about a 70 page script, you know, like a really long. <laughs> yeah, it's usually Franken. <laughs> yeah, because that cold open was long. It was like a 10 minute cold open. Yeah. What was it about? It was that <laughs> it was the first debate of the 2000 debate. Oh, it was just Gore a long Bush. debate. OK, OK. Bush. Uh, that's where was that the one where Will said strategery or something? Yeah. Uh, so Downey comes in like about five o'clock with the script and he five. does. Li- he, he starts reading the thing to me. <laughs> OK, now I had I could not figure out Gore and what the hell to do with that guy. Because he had so many coaches and he was one day he's like this and that's some sort of a list. But (laughs) another day he was something else. You know, he was like, you know, uh, let me tell you about a friend of mine. Her name's (laughs) Etta Munson. She's 94. Right. (laughs) But I always I always made sure I clenched and put just sort of a sort of a I didn't I didn't mess with Texas, you know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you change your jaw to get the sound well, you because need, right? when he got really excited he had like a slight lisp you know mm-hmm. and so downey had that in all the notes the, the thing is when downey did the line reading i un, i understood what i'd been trying to come up with which was a comic version of this guy 
And Downey came in with this sort of overbearing school teacher who meant well, but just tried too hard. And it, mm -hmm. and it played, you know, but it, that's really. So he was sort of doing it a rough version just to read the lines and you sort of picked up on that and you were like, thousand. ooh, that's actually, you stumbled into something there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because I'm, I'm not doing them in the village and nobody's laughing and nobody cares. And then, <laughs> Good you know, sign. Like, Seriously. And Downey comes in and he starts like, <clears throat> Bob, well, Jim, my plan is very different. And I was like, that's it. That's the fucking, that's the funny right there. That's that on Saturday to... afternoon, you've cracked yes, the code. And that's just funny what you say. And also just that voice is funny. And I think that Downey's good at picking out those He's things, really obviously. great at it, you know, and he was yeah. great, like with Dan Rather and everything. And, mm -hmm. and, and like, we're going out to the floor. Downey's behind me with the papers in his hand and he's going over again. Let me tell you about uh, the, that syrupy, <laughs> overbearing school teacher. And he kept, I was like, hammer it into me, Jim. Just keep going. Yeah. Just keep fucking going. Let me hear it. Cause you, you've got it. And, and then you uh, just walk out and do it. You just, he's like loading you. Yeah. And he's yeah, like standing it. a few yeah. feet off camera and I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm like, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba. Yeah, I know you don't want to lose it. So you just want to mumble it and keep saying it, you know? And of course it was a great juxtaposition with the, the caricature of W as the frat boy loose from the hip guy. And then painting Gore as the school marm was comedic energy. It was funny. I mean, but yeah, I don't know how these politicians feel about it. Cause they do, they do get put in a box pretty quickly. They do when, when we satirize. When we do it, yeah, real fast, and that's yeah. how people th think they talk now. And um, it's like when you were doing uh, Bush Senior. Mm -hmm. I mean, what the hell was that? And, and, <laughs> and it was just like all of a sudden people were like, "That's how W uh, George Senior talks." <laughs> Not you know? really, and yeah, it I wasn't mean, really you know, that. Just, yeah, it has to be slightly exaggerated somewhere to get a hook. That's right. You yes. had to. And that's what I learned from Dana was was caricature because I studied you and then we did that Carson Donahue thing. And oh, I love that. Your Donahue was supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> you are know. you are must be some kind of I mean, it was just such a <laughs> funny rhythm. And then Carson against that was just, you know, is that when you really hosted Dana nice or were you we were on the show? One of the times I hosted, we got to do that. It was like, it wasn't like a debate. We were in like a sketch, like hanging out in a kitchen or something. So it was different, but- uh, Yeah, like we were getting ready to go out for dinner. Yeah, it was such an odd juxtaposition, but I love the the Donahue. Donahue just the just... character of Donahue. He goes right into it. The head's bobbing. You're, you took <laughs> one thing that he does and you just- and he builds a little Made bit. it into this beautiful, beautiful caricature of, you know, right? What? That sincerity Wait, thing. Uh, huh. You're yeah. a blue- Collar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. And he goes, uh, da, 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 da. it's great. Blue collar guy. Married 20 years to the same gal. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> he did you. I mean, he actually came up to me when I was kind of at the peak of my time on SNL at some kind of lunchroom and he just did what. You did. He just, you got to be feeling great about this thing. And he did the exact same thing. So that was such a fun, fun yeah, sketch I, to I do. I met him one night and he was like, you got to feel like God is in his head. <laughs> you know, the stars <laughs> are back where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and you're like, what? 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 Now, How now fun. the Clinton, tell us about your Clinton. Because you owned Clinton after Phil. You did Clinton. And you, you extenuated it or made it your own. And uh, just what was your hook with him kind of? Because I kind of do a modern Clinton, which I'll do in a minute, which I, I found oh, in the I last five it. I want to hear that. Um, well, I, yeah, but I, let's let's go over your uh, how you found that. for. Um, you know. I didn't really find it until uh, I got a chance to meet him and be up close to him and feel him and see him do that thing. Yeah where he takes the room and mm -hmm. gets inside your personal space. And, you know, he's like a foot taller than me. You know, he's got a tux on and shit. And he's, it's the president of the United States. And he's the always the seducing, right? Oh, he's to do. Oh yeah. He's seducing everybody. It's his everybody. charm. Charm. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, he was sort of like, uh, like I, I said to him, um, okay, I'm just not gonna try to act like I don't look stupid. He said something to me like, like, um, this is a paraphrase, but not by much. It was something like, but I mean, Daryl, and he's looking, he's so close to me. He's in my personal space. And he's and it's like, I mean, I'm a, I make the, so sincerely, I make the headlines. But you, you, you turn them into gold. <laughs> oh, yeah, just wow. so, you know, so I'm much. Like going, yeah. I'm like, I also, you know, I'm just like, do I, should I fuck? Are we going to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I will so fuck you right now. And I'm not gay and I don't care. Um, I don't care. That's I, a, I don't think yeah. I, I don't think I have to be gay to enjoy think, this. You know, I went to my I, I went to a buddy's party at his house. It was probably like ten people, and we go in the kitchen. He goes, "There's food in the kitchen," and we go in there. And I was with a date, and Aquilera was there. There's probably like ten people, a couple of celeb types, Christina and then uh, here's Clinton's in there, and I heard he was there, but I was like, he's no, he's here, and he's in there with a Secret Service guy. And they're eating pizza and everyone just starts eating around the big island in the kitchen. And then he goofs around and then he goes, well, now you're the funny guy. Why don't you tell us some stuff to me? And I was, you know, of course I was stumbling and fumbling. But the point was, I see the uh, allure and I see how interesting he is and how riveting. And you can't believe you're in this small space with him. And then obviously the girls were all like freaking out and afterwards she's like can i just push you in this wood chipper on the way out and run back in because she was not not even faking it she's like i i can't even deal with this i'm so into him you know when yeah when when um i had told my uh wife at the time who doesn't really like men anyway but and, and <laughs> oh I'm, we'll I'm, dig into that on part two <laughs> yeah but i said you know i think the guy's got like some sort of weird charisma and she said, you know, that's bullshit. There's no such thing. And I was like, <laughs> if, seriously, if I invite you, if he invites me again, you meet, you come and meet him. And so, you know, uh, she came there and he saw her detected. He had a, an undecided <laughs> voter. <laughs> right. And wanted to, wanted and, to, and wanted to really win, lower win the boom on her and, and went yeah. over to her and just gave her the fucking, gave treatment. her the works. Oh, uh, yeah. There was a point in it where there was like a like a bright red patch appeared on her cheek. I was like, "Bitch!" Uh, <laughs> you can she always was tell. So, so flustered, yeah, by him, and so was I. And he's just a good going, word. You know, you know where are you from? She's like Key Largo. He's like, "Oh, I love Key Largo." Oh, she's like, no matter what you say. Oh, it's yeah, best. and she's like, "Well, it has a depressed economy." And then he <laughs> he's, he said something to her. That, it was something like, "You know, there's <clears throat> nothing wrong with Key Largo." It cannot be fixed by what is right. Oh. Uh, and he goes, like, also, I use my dick as a tongue depressor sometimes if you want me to jam it down your gullet. <laughs> I did. I did later on. I thought in the last, like, five, six years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he kind of went real fast. Like, remember when Hillary fainted when she was running against Trump? And yeah. then he went on Charlie Rose. Fake. And I noticed that he did a lot of throwaway kind of mumbling. I, and I don't know if you did that hook, but it, it's kind of like, well, Hill's a fainter. I mean, she faints a lot all the time, you know, because she's a little itty bitty thing and she's heavy in the bun of the thigh, which I found adorable. But she, you know, there's a little humidity and she starts going around like a whirling dervish. But he sort of has this kind of throwaway casual thing that he does. And I don't know what people are saying or what are they like kind of almost fast. I don't know lately, lately, but that was five years ago. I mean, I really wish I had picked up on that because th that would just have been gorgeous for him to. Be saying directly and talking directly. And I'll say, let me tell you something about this. I'm about that, you know, sort of mm -hmm. like a madman, like a like a diarrhea of the mouth die. Um, mm -hmm. But but you do his voice now is hoarse, correct? Somewhat hoarse. I never really yeah. did him when I did him on the variety show I did with Smigel and Lucy C.K. and Carell and Colbert. I just did him in the first sketch and it, it bombed out the show. But I didn't do it at all. Like I had no, because Phil had done it, you owned it. And sometimes when someone owns it on Saturday Night Live, you're kind of like, ah, eh, that's whoever has it on SNL. They're the, they're the president of comedy of that character. Right. And then I was asked to do it and, and I just didn't have anything. 
uh, at all. It's terrible. I've only mm. just casually observed him in the last few years and found him very interesting how he kind of his mouth is kind of open and there's sort of a, a normal guy in a, in his 70s kind of you know that, that's a little rough and stuff i just do it for my yeah. own amusement i mean i don't it's not much to but do he's with not it. he's not senile or anything yet he's still pretty no. sharp dude right oh yeah he's thin he got thin yeah Be, because of all the cardiovascular stuff which i can speak to but you know where you just like he went vegan or something after his second whatever operation but anyway so um yeah how What's fun. your favorite impression? Yeah, what, you've what, ever are the, done? what are your favorite <laughs> ones? <laughs> well, first let me say I want to talk about when Lauren asked me to do uh, Regis Philbin after yes. Dana had left me Ooh, nothing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Dana know, I took like, every crumb. I, uh, like, I thought you did it great, by the way, and I well, I never had a problem with that. I don't, you know, Sherry O'Terry did it once. Uh, stunt casting in those days, <laughs> but before you did it, and I just thought that's I don't own the impression. I mean, people would say to me, "Well, I'm just doing George Bush my hook. You could do it." I mean, I don't own it, but so anyway, yeah, but speak to after that. After you did it, I don't. I want to do it like that. You know, exactly. That's you don't want to copy the hooks of somebody. You want to discover them on the on your own. And yeah. I did it. Must have done it ten times on the show. You yeah, know? And, and like if if I were you know if I were doing it in a club and I did like an act like a my my version they wouldn't laugh at it and i never even tried after you did it you know i never even tried it on stage with regis you know i said to lauren it's like dana took everything i it can't be done better than that he's like well we need it and just like, do it like however so what i decided to so do what did was, you do was close <laughs> off his nasal passages you know yes <laughs> that's what i decided to do and it made the sound slightly different. And this way I wasn't doing you. Do you yeah. know what I mean? No, I, I know. And that's part of his frequency, I would say, a little bit nasal. Yeah, like you know? Joy, Joy and I were down at Tijuana in a cave that was a thousand years old. It was a thousand. <laughs> 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 I did a sign off the other day with William Shatner and just went into Regis in a way of just being able to visit with him again. Honest to God. It starts with honest to God. You know, when he told me, this guy, Daryl Hammond, let me tell you, he's a human tape recorder. He can do anybody. Honest to God. Everybody <laughs> loves him. He human did Bill tapers. Clinton. He did this. And you just like the charm of Regis when he would sign off with a guest. Just that specific thing was so fun to inhabit. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'd be the guest is on the show, like going uh, or he'll say something like and so and so and so and so and so and so. Then he'll pause and then he'll go, but that's terrific. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what did he lose? Well, that's his place. what he do. He do his story. There I was with Brokaw, dead tennis, and we had a terrible table. Then he'd take a sip of coffee. But that's terrific. But anyway, that's what happens when you're doing these things. Let me tell you, you're the toast of the town, kid. But yeah, that was, he's a fun guy. I mean, do you ever just like, because I'll do it sometimes with Paul McCartney or, or something. I'll just find myself kind of mumbling if I'm alone, just sort of doing it just to be in that attitude with McCartney. Yeah, you can, you yeah. can actually do Paul McCartney. And I swear to God, it's not the fucking easiest thing to do. Ooh, you know, I like to hear you that. Tell you, it's okay. true. Oh, come on. Well, everyone, th everyone thinks they can do the Liverpoolian accent. It's not that damn easy. It, it For me, the hook into it is making up words that are liver puddly and colloquialisms but are sort of made up Boopily -boop. and that you know we're, we're sitting here you know with Dale Hammond we're doing the talky talk you know we're zooming we're zooming yeah. in yeah. you know and we can't hear each other so good we get wobbly we get wobbly and oh, just man. that's the fun of it is repeating those little phrases and I like being Paul McCartney I do a thing about just if the news is bad, just filter it through his attitude. We had a pandemic, you know, a little virus came around. We all sat inside had a cup of tea. What do we do? I said, put a mask on with Robert Banker, you know. <laughs> so it's just, a banker? Yeah, you make him up. You just, you just add an E and an R. You rob a banker. And he's like, you know, hold you up. I hold you up. So <laughs> I love just visiting that. I mean, do you find yourself... Uh, coming on to any voice sometimes just to deal with stress in a way or just, you know, yeah, or it just I, makes you feel good to be that, that character. 
Yeah, it, it, there was a, a guy uh, that I knew that was supposedly mobbed up that um, when I used to hang out at McHale's in 46 and 8th, that was like the most colorful guy. And he, you know, he probably had a third grade education, but he was, they said he was a gangster and he talked like a gangster. And he said funny, charming, super smart things with yeah. bad grammar, you know? Like, uh, what did what he said to me? He's like, a, I'm like, he's like, Daryl, you know, you know what happens if you hit it, guy in the head with a lamp, right? <laughs> hit a guy in the head with a lamp, you know what happens after that? You go to the, you, you go to the penitentiary, you understand? You understand? The penitentiary. Yeah. Because there was a guy in my house that had insulted me. He was a house guest of mine. So I'm drinking. I'm like, I felt like hitting a guy in the head with a lamp. And he's like, Daryl, you know, <clears throat> And tomorrow morning on the bus to Rikers Island. Right? <laughs> yeah. But listen to this, Danny. He said to me, cool. he goes, um, and the other thing about it is, you know, you get your bun on, you hit a guy with a lamp, you know, and, and you you alter him, Daryl. You alter. Most humans cannot alter another. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> See, that's the hook. I'm like, what is alter? Like, what, alter. what, what, what is like that? Like the brain? Is or... like, yeah. Yeah, he was You'll like You'll make a, him different or something, right? Yeah, it was like he was saying, well, I mean, you tune a guy up, you know, he wakes up with a headache or whatever. When you alter another, uh, <laughs> you know, he wakes up with a speech impediment. You understand? You and, understand it. And, 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 and <laughs> yeah. he don't walk right no more. You know, he don't laugh all the way no more. <laughs> you know, he got to walk in tub now. That kind of thing. Walk yeah. in tub uh, now. Oh, that's I love that. That I really relate to that because when now. you go in a character like that, you just don't feel afraid. You're like a guy, you know, you if we want to dance, we can dance. I don't like to dance, but I'll dance with you. You want to no, dance? Like, I like the tough guy you know? that's trying to keep it cool like that. Like the tough guy, and I, I love care. it when they I'll add do it. they add no at the end of a sentence. So I, I have a friend like that, Gary Prince. He lives in Florida from Brooklyn, and he and you're eating and stuff. He goes, "This good pasta, no." He says no at the end. I love that. You go past yeah. the no. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's that's. But it makes you brave if you. I always thought when I was a kid growing up in California that New York or the East Coast could beat us up. Like if there was just they came at us. Yeah. They're just so tough, and you know what the fuck you gonna do? You know, I got these drivers. Like you know, I, I'm always faithful to my wife. You know, I got a little, a couple things on the side, but I'm monogamous. You know, every two, two times a month, I met this little gal, but I'm monogamous. I mean, these are direct quotes, and you go, who are these guys? <laughs> I mean, no wonder the Sopranos was so brilliant, you know? Did you ever do try to do Tony Soprano? I didn't, but he's I, a- I brief, you know, there was a time when I did, a, I was doing a sketch with Molly, and she was doing the 50-year-old dancer. I had a decent sub- Tony Soprano and uh, it's very I, high, cue, isn't it? You know. The cue cards were so different from dr- dress. Like I hadn't oh. actually seen these words before. Oh, tough. and I mean, I had I had like you know pancake in my mouth, and I, and I panicked, and I did. I went into like a Brando thing. <laughs> you know, I can relate to that. I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything else. You know, <laughs> I, couldn't, I I lost the impression. You know, it was really. I actually had dinner with him one night. Um, some restaurant called the Five Amanda. Towns. He was work. He was supposedly going to play like a, a hitman, like a gay hitman. Uh, we had the same acting teacher, so the acting teacher put us together, and and we were there. And I was drinking, and the only thing I remember him was asking me if I was okay. And I said, "What? I think I'm drinking too many martinis." And he leans into me, and he says, "Jesus fucking Christ!" Jija fucking Christ. And I was like, <laughs> that's a good did hook. Anyone else hear that? Jija. Jija. Jija Christ. Jija fucking Christ. I didn't think he was that easy. You know, the guy that mystifies me, have you ever done a Shatner? You know what? Uh, when someone, oh, I did it in, a, in early stand up when I was in college. Mm-hmm. But when, you know, Kevin Pollock took a ride with Shatner and walk and wound it down so hard. It's another thing where you're like, eh, I guess I, I'll leave that alone. I always wanted to do John Malkovich, but I always go to Travolta. That's kind of a goal, a casual goal of mine is to do a perfect John Malkovich. But with Shatner, I didn't. But you did him right on the show, didn't you? 
Yeah, but but not well. I mean, I was, you know, Higgins helped me out a lot with it. I was stuck on an impression. I was stuck on Pollock's impression, and 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 it's like doing Nicholson. You know, I didn't want to do it after I'd seen so many people do it so well. Yeah, um, and Pollock and was the and, one you both thought was a good one, right? Pollock, I thought, was the king. Um, he went crazy guy. with it. He had a physicality with the yeah. elbow hey, and hey, the head hey. turn. Kevin will wind down on things so hard, and there's so much nuance. I mean, his walking is the same kind of thing. There's several guys who can do a brilliant walking, but his- I mean, there was a guy back then that I loved and I followed pretty closely named Joe Alasky, who had- a, Oh, had yeah. Joe Alasky. Yeah. Had a real- He ended up doing Yosemite Sam for Warner Brothers. <laughs> He did, um, but he had Great. a really, really nice Shatner, and I, I, I was afraid that when I was doing him, really I really exquisite Shatner, exquisite. I mean, so you, don't, you don't like you, you intentionally, you don't want to be influenced by other impressions. You'd rather discover it on your own, well, right? Walking, you can do at home now. Walking, can anybody can do now? I, I think I don't know who started walking out of all you guys, but as being a, a casual observer. It's turned into like a lorn where you can just take it home and a to go and everyone at home can do it. But it's always a version of whoever started it. You know, I don't know. You know, I don't know who who do you remember was one of the first walk-ins. I, I don't really know. I think that because of SNL, when when you have a personal story that you're telling, mm -hmm. like when Walken mm -hmm. said, Bass suits so funny and Bass as well, then you're then you don't even really care if it's accurate. It's just a character in your story. Um, yeah. But as far as doing the clubs, it was he went through his peak. I mean, everyone was doing Nicholson, you know, and then for a while, everyone's doing Walken. I don't know what it is now, you know, as far as the younger movie stars. I mean, I've been doing Brad Pitt from I just do Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I saw the movie 11 times because I just got possessed by it. Really? And, I, yeah. I'd like to hear about that. Um, I just saw it the first time and then I just thought, oh, that was okay. And then I saw it again. Then I saw it with my brother. Then I saw it with my wife. Then I showed it to relatives. Then I saw it down here. And uh, let's face it, man, I'm a goddamn has been. What'd that guy say to you? <laughs> Don't cry in front of the Mexicans. Look, I like being your gopher and I like house sitting, but let's face it. I haven't worked as a stunt man in quite some time. And I don't think there's, I think there's a lot of things worse than going making Italian movies. Yeah, I don't want to be a goddamn Italian movie. How many you seen? One, two. <laughs> I just, I love the movie so much. Cool. You know, I mean, I love that movie so much. That's that cool. That's good. I even, yeah, it's wonderful. I'll do more. I've memorized the movie, <laughs> basically. I ended up going to Cielo Drive and everything, you know, the Sharon Tate house. And oh, you got possessed by the movie, too. Yeah. Oh, uh, a thousand percent. By the way, Kevin Pollack has seen it 12 or 13 times. How do you know that? I had dinner with him and asked him. <laughs> oh, they're I old buddies you, from uh, San Fran. That guy Pollock, when I saw him do walking, I'm like, all right, no, I ain't doing that. <laughs> it's over. Lo I mean, it's locked. It, it, it really reminds me of, you know, when I was a kid, I was 21, 22, and just moved to New York. And through a friend of a friend, we got tickets to the public theater to see Meryl Streep in a play called Taken in Marriage. And she does in the play, she, and, you know, we were in the second row at the public theater. And in the play, she played this woman from Connecticut um, who had a cold and had to cry. OK, that was her that was her, mm. ch her thing for the night. And she did all that. And I tell you, when it was over, it's like, you know, I said to my friend, I was like, I don't know what the fuck we're doing, but we ain't doing that. We're not doing that. What she's doing up there. Yeah, yeah. It's a different, you know, it's a different profession. It's coming mean? from some, <laughs> some other, other place yeah, in their yeah, brain. Like, you know, we're, we're taking yeah. our acting class and we're studying acting and we're doing death of a salesman and blah, blah, blah. And then I saw. We're not Meryl doing Street that. Was, That's great. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck we're doing, brother. We ain't doing that. Um, boy, was that magnificent. But I, Pollock, uh, you know, when he did the walk and I backed off, I'm like, yours, yours. Yeah. Do you I see some people it do it and you go, not like those guys that are great, but you see casual people do it on some show and you go, or a stand up and you go, they're close, but it's not there. You could, they could do it way better. If, you know, yeah. there's also the comedy frequency of it. If somebody, maybe not the, perfect but it they have a funny take on it yeah you know that's uh, the hard but, part is to put it in your act and make a scenario daryl you, your act is a lot of these impressions right so 
Do you have to figure out ways to put it in there? I, I would, I wouldn't put a walking in and I wouldn't put a, ever put a Nicholson in and uh, I would never put a Shatner in uh, because I mean, my, you know, after Alaska and Pollock, I mean, what the fuck am I going to do with that? I mean, it was, mm. you know, it was hard enough doing Regis in my act after Dana had, you know, knocked the ball, you know, out of the stadium so many times and, and um, people loved it. I don't know. Close the nostril so and you're there. But you own, you own your, you're up in the, the hall of fame of impressionists in yeah. the last 50 years in America all the way from Frank Gorshwin and the Canadian Rich Little. Gorsh. Frank and then, Gorsh and, hilarious. Yeah. And then through some of Dan Aykroyd's impressions, Eddie Murphy, who does like, uh, f- he's like, does like five supernatural impressions. I don't know if he Eddie? cares. Eddie, his, some of his stuff is amazing, but he doesn't, you know, I don't think he tries to learn or does a lot of them, but they're so amazing, the ones that he does, his Cosby and his, <sighs> you know, it's so in the pocket. Mr. You know. T, Cosby. Yeah. No, Jackie no, just, Gleason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, Eddie was like my major, you know, he, like my my hero. Because the first guy I ever saw that was consistently funny with his impressions and, you know, and I was so. Well, he was a, he was, there's no one like him. You know, we talk about the history of Saturday Night Live and he was 19 or 20 and he just exploded off the screen, you know, on SNL. I was still busting tables. So I don't know how people get that confidence at that young age. We've kind of t- touched on that, but it's amazing to me. But also the vocal dexterity is Michael Jackson was also spot on. Again, not and that easy And singing as do. Stevie Wonder, singing beautifully. Oh my God, you know, yeah. yeah. Oh, I can sing Stevie. too, which is hard to do. If he you can really sing and sing. add that le- level in, that Did you layer. ever do a singing impression, Daryl? I don't know if I have really. I'm, it's not one of my gifts, singing, you know. I, you know, there was a time in my life when I experimented briefly with... Uh, Doing Anthony Newley, this that, <laughs> Anthony Newley. Oh him? wow, the funny man can't. Whatever he's that giant eyebrows and from the seventies. The sunrise, <laughs> yeah. sprinkle his Spin- <laughs> Yeah, well, that was a very dramatic voice. Yeah, uh, I don't know spade, if maybe Spade is yawning through. No, I didn't. Oh, oh my camera. Yeah. <laughs> Spade, Spade owned Tom Petty and he had a, he would open for me. He had a hat. He didn't have any props, but he had a Tom Petty hat. Fuck. What did you put on? Mutton chops? I put and then carpet, he made a face. Yeah, and then I put my tongue up in the front part of my mustache area, like underneath, and it made my face pull down. It was very unattractive and a very rude one. And then when I met Tom Petty, I thought he'd be so excited about it because... Michael J. Fox or Tom Petty or people I do or be assigned on the show, you're usually a fan, but impressions are so exaggerated, they're not always flattering, and I forget that, and I forget they might not be psyched about it. And uh, Tom Petty was pretty cool, and I, I, I remember there was an SNL book. I went over to Letterman to have him sign it, and he was very cool, but I thought... Fuck, and then I, I, over the years, you know, I realized, God, this is kind of a dumb thing I do. I used to, I used to close with the impression, Daryl, of Petty, and I didn't really have impressions, so it was just... I would music just do, would play. Yeah, right? I, would, yeah. I would sing like him and just play like the ending, and it tied into like a callback too, so it was a big, really wham, bam ending. And then, uh, and then... Dennis Miller, we did a gig, and I walk out front the next day, and he goes, <laughs> and I'm holding the hat, and he goes... You sleep with that thing, Spade? And I go, and he goes, time to lose the props, guy. No props. And I go, that's not really props. It's uh, I just have this and a little xylophone for my Jeopardy bit. He goes, those are those are props. <laughs> if Dennis was here now, he'd say, Spudley. Spudley and the ham cat. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> just, Spudley just, leaning on the pad. We got to get Spudley your head and measured. the ham cat sharing, uh, you know, copy. Yeah, that's right. You can do <laughs> I ran out of speed. Go ahead. The ham, ham cat, Hammond. Yeah, ham cat. What? I can't do Dennis. You no. don't do Dennis. He was just. He was on the show. We just did him an update. You know. Did you do that with Hanks? I did. I it did with it Hanks. once. It was yeah. I did it with Hanks. Hanks did it. Dennis did it. We all three in a row did it. 
if I'm in a role with Dennis, I do, I literally, my vocabulary gets better. Yeah. I literally am able sometimes, because he's so fast. And when you talk to him, just to, even today, he'll drop so many references Bombs and on you. Yeah, weird, you know. funny things. You go, where is this coming from? He's always he's like two steps ahead of you. I mean, the guy is just this giant brain. I have an impression really question for both of you. Impression mm. question. That's our next podcast. Yeah. Impression question. So we talked to Shatner recently, and he's, I guess, 90 now. Dana, knowing him growing up and you did your young impression of him, is it that different now? Is the voice different? The voice is pretty... You said at the end, your voice is really strong. And that was one thing that oh, yeah. that is a trick that we're like, that's why you don't think he's old. He's not like, hello? Like 90, you'd think he'd be feeble, but he's like, hey guys, good talking. And I'm like, holy fuck, you're right. That was a strong voice. And is he is he that much different now or is it still about the same type of moves he has? Yeah. I mean, you know when it's it's irresistible to not do stuff that other people have done like that especially. kevin pollack thing you're talking about again well i mean like um i, I don't do shatner but i mean when he's like there's da 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 although the face is too bad. yes you know right. and and that, that is what we all grew up with i mean initially it was him as captain kirk and he said he developed all that. One, if he couldn't remember the lines, he would, he'd would he have a pause. I can't believe what everybody's doing. And it was intentional. Oh, wait, that's really good. I can't believe what he's saying, you know. Yeah. And he did it, and he was mesmerizing with those rhythms. So we, I don't think in real life he talked like that. That was Captain Kirk, and yeah. that's where we all took it from. I mean, I didn't watch, you know, Boston Legal that much. He played Denny Crane and oh, right. the, the Knots. But I'm... Don't think he did that. Scotty, I need power and I need it now, you know. And I think it was a brilliant kind of creation of his. You couldn't mm -hmm. take your eyes off of him and yeah. Spock. But yeah. But that, uh, people always say, you know, Kevin Pollack sounded more like Shatner than Shatner. You know? <laughs> from that from that era. Yeah. Scunny. Yeah. I gotta get that. It's impossible. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> can't know what you are doing. I yeah. So I mean, I mean, it would have been fun After to do it. God later, we both had to go. Wait, uh, God, God, now it gets one. into Regis. You understand? I actually, when I tried to learn Trump, because when he popped out, I I thought of Regis. Trump, the most and I went and I added Brando in a weird way. I don't wow. really do Brando, but Regis was here. And then you walk him over to Brando, and you sort of in here, and then you got a little bit. But, but <laughs> I mean. You know, Trump went through various incarnations. In the beginning, he he had a stronger, more classic voice. But then when he became president and he started doing all these weird word salads, you know, weird ticks and rhythms like crazy stuff. Yeah. You know, like like, you know, I, I studied him the, the year that I did him. I studied him and I found that he was inspiring the really getting people to feel things. But if you look at the transcript, you can't see it. Cause no. it, it, it doesn't make any, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's like, what, what would be a good example? Like uh, dogs, a lot of people like dogs. I like dogs. Cats are not nice. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I not know. Nice. I mean, it, was, was <laughs> not, he, not nice. did, did you watch celebrity print? I assume did a lot of people, when he did celebrity apprentice, mm -hmm. I don't, didn't watch it that much, but I don't remember him doing all those many people because he he will repeat one phrase like 10 times in 30 seconds. We're doing a lot of things. We're doing good things. Good things. Many people are saying many good things. Did he do that during the Celebrity Apprentice? No, the new he guy, never did it. He never yeah. did it until he stood in front of a crowd of 30,000 people. And then all this and he loves came it out. Too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I did a show once, you know, uh, in front of 10,000 people in Boston and I was aware that hearing 10,000 people respond to me was making me larger, faster, mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Just different. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm and you don't even know it right away. You're like, you're just sort of matching their energy and you're like, oh shit, I'm getting off my game here. Yeah. And it, well, I mean, this was the only time I've ever, I ever had done that or have done mm -hmm. that. And, and all of a sudden I was aware that I was moving differently. 
my voice was crisper. My segues were shorter. Like, yeah, that's, that's interesting. I was becoming a different comic up there. That's cool. And I do think if you don't feel like if the crowd is so big, it is a little bit like a stand up trick to repeat your premise over and over again. You know, mm-hmm. we're doing We're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win so much. You're not going to say we don't want to win so much. We're going to win. <laughs> we're winning. And it's you can't hardly exaggerate it. <laughs> You're going to say we're, we, we don't want to win think, so you know, much. Yeah, yeah that's think, what he has a quote. <laughs> you know, he has, he had a meme online that, that came directly from Huey P. Long, the former colorful governor of Louisiana. And Huey P. Long used to say, it's not me they're after. It's you. I'm just in the way. And Mm. that's what people, his base walked away feeling every time like, yeah, there are people after my way of life. Yeah, we did get fucked. And on some level, a lot of them did, you know, with that real estate scam and all of that. But Trump has my my impression of him when when I was around him was that he could see right through me like a street, like a street guy, like a like a hustler. You know, definitely. I had a Russian hygienist. This will make sense in a second. She said, Putin, Putin is trained. He's KGB. He can dissect anyone psychologically. He'll get mm-hmm. the power. But I just wonder, he goes up against this other kind of altered sort of quirky guy. And you always wonder the relationship between Trump and these, you know, ye, Putin. Because Putin probably like, how do I figure this guy out? What, is, what am I supposed to say to him? Because Trump was so, you're so beautiful. And I always felt he was like a mob boss. They always go, oh, he kisses, he loves, he kisses ass dictators. I thought it was a total manipulation. We had a beautiful letter, beautiful friendship. I love him. And then if you look at his policies, he was sticking him in the back. That's a mob boss thing, right? I love you. Who loves you? And then he do a hit on him. What What do you you think? think? I I don't know. I thought he treated Putin pretty good, didn't he? Well, he armed the Ukrainians, which made Putin crazy. He did mm. everything he could to stop the second Nord Stream pop pipeline. I mean, he mm. had it at the bottom of the Black Sea, which was ne- the second natural gas pipeline, you know. And then he bombed the shit out of him in Syria and stuff. I mean, it wasn't. And then there were the diplomats. and But um, it was subtle things. But that was juxtaposed to we love, which was really close. Well, what so about it's odd. What, do, what do you both think by the time Alec was doing Trump? He sort of had, and he's not an impressionist, but he sort of had to do just a very makeup exaggerated version at that point. That wasn't like exactly a great Trump, but it was at least, it got so effective. sort of character. Yeah, it was effective. It, it yeah, did what it was supposed I to I always do. say that, you know, my impressions aren't impressions the way people do impressions. My impressions are SNL impressions. How to do it there when the stuff isn't written till the last second. Yeah, it's very hard. And and, and I finally settled on and I did this. You know, there were a number of impressions that I was I was funny with that weren't vocally, um, you know, what I was was accustomed to doing. But, you know, with him, I mean, he was killing. Okay, what else do you have to say? And, you know, Alec, Alec is a hulking. Alec is kind of a strong. (laughs) Yeah, he's a really strong guy. And presence. Trump is a big, strong guy, you know. Uh, and so there was a match there in a way. And it, it was very effective. It really worked. And Alec Baldwin uh, just knows how to land a laugh in that studio, you know, on every, every Yeah, I sketch. think he got it down to where he could get it. Plus, the yeah. crowd is so ready to pounce on Trump. So he could give a joke that's a six out of ten. They'll give it a nine. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that he was killing. And after that, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. You know, the whole point is, you know, I, I, I Lauren had said, you know, it's OK to back off from an impression if that, that makes it funnier. It's OK to caricature it. I even had, you know, like those um, those Hirschfeld drawings where he did all those exaggerations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that, that looked more like Kate Hepburn than Kate Hepburn. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And so I model I tried to model myself after that after that. But, um, you know, people would interview me about about Alec and I go, the guy's killing. I don't know what what else you want. And also, you know, whatever my crazy is, it doesn't extend to not wanting other people to score. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't own that character. It's not mine. I played at Yankee Stadium. I don't own third base. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't, it it would be like being a, a hitter in the big leagues and you don't want the other hitters to, you expect the other hitters to not do well. 
Well, I didn't even think of it that way because I guess you had done it. And, yeah, I get it. But uh, well, we're we're part of a fraternity, so it's it's not glamorous. I mean, we know that Alec, they're getting the wig on. He's got glue. He's sweating. You know, he's trying to get a drink of water. Mm-hmm. It'll be in the cards. It's just uh, you know emotional combat being yeah, on we that show. The end, get and out I've been there, in the yeah. studio when they're getting ready for the cold opening. I was doing a little guest spot. You know. And it's like Mm. nerve wracking. You see him getting ready. This is the start of the show. Hopefully, God willing, this works, you know. And then everything goes dead silent right before. Everyone's like, so you just have props for, you know, anyone who does that. It's not, it's not easy. Who can (laughs) can do it and not show. And then, and then from the floor, Chris is going, 30 seconds. Yeah. And you're like, okay, five seconds. So one thing that I love that you did, I wanted to get to and just your, pick your brain on it. When you did Sean Connery, mm-hmm. um, I felt like that was an example. It's a great the, one. The way you use it in that Jeopardy show was so powerful. Like you landed, the way it was written and the way you did him, so serious. And I don't know, what, yeah, it, it, I mean, that like, was like a magic when, sketch. When I first was learning, you know, the impression it was the same thing with Peg Koppel. I was learning these impressions and I was probably nailing, coming close to nailing it vocally, but mm-hmm. it wasn't funny, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I always thought of you and, uh, and, and, and the stuff you've done. And, and, and I tried to do him in a funny way. And it wasn't as accurate as it had been vocally when I was learning it in my office, but it was funny. I was getting my laugh. Your whole physical that. attitude and everything about you was so serious and yeah. so so masculine that yeah. it just in this silly Trebek. show, but it yeah. really, yeah, yeah, it was just I mean, one of those. You know, Lauren being around there is kind of like you know, uh, Daryl. It's a funny show. Is mm-hmm. it funny? Are you being funny? Are you getting the laughs? Like the first time I did Ted Kappel, I didn't get a, <laughs> a single laugh. You know, and he's like, stretch it out of shape. Be like Dana. I never did couple very good. Like that, the, the, the tenor that you have is perfect. All, the only thing I did but was from the show. I'm Ted Koppel and this is Nightline. I just took a yeah. long pause. So yeah, it's, it's, it's trickery. That's in a okay. Way. You know, you're, what do they say in acting class? You're printing Ted Koppel. Now you can do the material. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't have like, thank God I wasn't vocally, vocally accurate every time, but, like with Connery, it was like a whole fucking, you know, like uh, <clears throat> he didn't say that last night, you know, <laughs> when I was pumping Mugu guy pan all over your tonsils, you know, <laughs> it was, it was a you character the sure that was so brilliant. That. Yeah, I was doing I was being like Dana. I exaggerated him and it killed it killed as opposed to when I just, you know, did it vocally super and then when they lay, just laid there. It's true. <laughs> I don't think people understand the pressure of of doing stuff like that because the whole it's only like the whole planet is watching, right? <laughs> yeah, but like it's Trump, just... Trump t- tweeted about me a couple of times, or oh, and you know wow. I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, Vlad Putin's reading this, yo. Yeah, how crazy! You're getting ready to go on TV, and oh yeah, they're watching in Moscow. Mm-hmm. Wow. They're aware. They're watching in Moscow tonight. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it too much, you'll just start, start crying. I tried to yeah. just make that audience right in front of me laugh, you know, but yeah, terrifying. Yeah. I mean, I was doing a thing. Uh, one time I was doing a Rumsfeld bit and, and I look up and A-Rod is standing there and Paul McCartney and I just like panicked. I was like, what in the fuck am I doing in this room? You know, and they have to watch you. Yeah. Why am I in a room with a with an original Beatle? Well, there's only one Beatle. A little bit, two Beatles. I mean, shit. That's kind of why they they not everyone, I guess, is comfortable out there. And I'm not sure I ever was comfortable. I was always I I went home most of the time thinking I disgraced myself. You know, even even into after ten years, still you didn't. Absolutely. And then it got really, you know, difficult for me in the end because, um, you know, when Obama came in, um, I didn't play anyone in his administration and the writing was sort of on the wall. Mm -hmm. 
Um, oh, yeah. Your time's up, bro. But it, you know, it lasted a, a an agonizing two more years. Mm-hmm. And I've always told people it's harder to get off Saturday Night Live than it is to get on Saturday. Night Live. <laughs> well, it's hard to go. Where do I go? Like everyone leaves and goes. I gotta go somewhere because I'm. I gotta make some money and I gotta. It, nothing beats a steady check. And whenever nothing. you people forget, like in SAG or you stop a TV show or movie. And it goes from good money to zero. There's no middle. It's mm-hmm. just zero. And you go, fuck. I get a couple of residuals here and there, but that's not doing it. And it's just high pressure. And it's it's always hard to just jump and go, I got to go. And then you're like, why? And then after a week, you're like, I could still do it. I mean, I still know how to do it. But you, you probably do feel it's time. I, when I left, I felt it was time and it was a little late. I think that you created this great character that has traveled, you know, on situation comedies and stuff. For people like Daryl and I, there's really no place to do what we do. I mean, there's only one live sketch show from New York where you do impressions and characters. There's nothing quite like it. So I could see why it's, you know, it's hard to let it go. It's strange to come back. And, you know, you always have some part of your brain like, God, why couldn't I have done this a long time? But, you know, Carol Burnett did nine years, <laughs> you know? I mean, mm-hmm. there were these variety shows just aren't around. I tried it in prime time. I think Martin Short did. There was there was In Living Color, which was his own different style. But generally speaking, to do sketch comedy, it's just SNL. They have their own lane, really. So yeah. that's And they unique. know how to do it the best. His costumes are great. Everyone when it works, it, it's it's magic. It's live. It's live. And they have Kim Kardashian or Wayne Gretzky on there. It's it's very, it's 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 got and, so many things about it. And Dana taught me that in dress rehearsal and tech rehearsal, when you're saying live from New York, you never say it's live from New York. It's Saturday night. You always say live from New York. It's gobbledygook. i always try well i always hope i'm peaking on air you know i always hope that when i was on the air show the 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 report card part of my brain is going this is the best i've done it this week you Mm -hmm. hate to peak at dress we've talked about that but you know we did talk about it a lot and you said um it's sort of like get your bearings know where your mark is get the voice right get familiar with the language get some laughs and uh but you said something bizarre to me. You said, save something for air. It's hard to do, but yeah. It didn't make any... Yeah. It's very difficult. Well, but you want to get on and you know you go, oh, I saved too much because the sketch got cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you have to know, if you're in the cold opening, you're probably going to go on, you know. But uh, yeah, it's a real mental thing, SNL. And to try to turn the tables of of confidence where you're like... I can't wait to show them what I'm going to do. Same thing with stand-up. We all do stand-up. And some nights you're just in such command and control. Yeah. You're just like, you're just dominating, you know. And then some nights it's just, you just feel awkward. And it's hard when you're on live TV. Nothing yeah. worse than doing air and about 20 seconds in the air, you're like, they're not as good of a crowd. There's nothing quite like going, so I've done this before and it's killed before. And I don't know what's wrong with you this killed on letterman but it's mm-hmm. not killing it yuck yucks <laughs> yeah yeah so it reverses the yeah right I you, mean, you, know, you haven't been in front of a crowd and it's like you're two or three minutes in and you're going oh wait they don't get me <laughs> yeah they they're not buying it, it. they don't get i just threw my my high hard when i threw my fastball like three fastballs <laughs> yeah you know, it's just not happening tonight. I just try to break it down then. Just start doing crowd work or something. Just mayday, mayday. Shake it up, yeah. I always think yeah. if you're not buying the first three jokes, you're not going to like the last three. They're all about the same. Like, if you don't think I'm funny, it's all yeah. about like this. Yeah. I just gave you my best shit right there. and You just sat there like a pool yeah. of carp, you know? Yeah, like, fuck. Oh, man. gross. Uh, why did we choose this life oh. path? We're in a crazy. We're crazy people. Well, right, Daryl. We're, we're nutty theater folk. Anything yeah. else for Daryl, Dana? What do you think? Um, I've just enjoyed this so much. I it We're loving this, and I say this every time. I just like hanging out with people that I've had interactions with and especially had touchstones with, with Saturday Night Live. So it's just so much fun to do this. And um, I will come on your podcast when next time you ask me. Oh, you know? I'm asking you both right now. Um, I will, whenever, uh, whenever you, you just let me know. It's really, it's, it's really difficult. You know, for a while we were doing well, we had like, 
you know, we had Jane Fonda. Wow. Um, you know, um, we had some pretty cool people on and we did a decent job. But Jesus, once I don't work that much, but my partner, Chris Milhouse, works a lot. He produces. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to get, to put, to get it together sometimes. But It is. The key to podcasting is to make it as easy as possible. So you keep doing it. Yeah, I mean, like if so you guys come on, of course, that would give us a huge boom. And any 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 form of servitude I could do for either one of you, let me know. Cause you did I, it. I got a, a set up here. Uh, I'll get rid of this buzz. But yeah, let me know. I'm happy to come on. And I'm going to have someone transcribe this. And then we'll 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 read it like a script. We'll just re <laughs> do what we just did. Like, but this it'll be worked on your really podcast. well. Let's just do this. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we should do. Um, how do how do I uh, how do I say thanks? Um, <laughs> you don't have to say thanks. You just came on our podcast. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I know, but it was you know it was a really good experience, and it felt real. It just feels good to talk about comedy, and you're both funny as fuck. Last time I saw Spade was at Comedy Store, and you fucking crushed. Oh, I love it. Thank Spade you. Spade knows how to do stand up extremely well. He is extremely yeah. good at stand up. That's yes. Right. Well, I didn't do many impressions on the show and it's sort of fun for me to cuz it's different different mechanisms. There's different reasons people on the show, but it's so fun. I'm always so jealous when I see good impressions. It's so fun to watch and uh mm. just even watching you guys do it this whole talk is hilarious. It's great. I just tell people to throw their voice. Like I enjoy Daryl's uh, New York guy as much as any impression. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you go, well, I'm doing an impression of my brother, Brad. Now he's called Garth. But also for young comedians, I go, just throw your voice. Just start talking yeah. like this or whatever. Just just yeah. get, get it out if you want to do comedy that way. You yeah, know? I mean, some of my favorite voices are, are not famous people. I mean, yeah. You know, all the time I lived in New Orleans and people that I've met there, you know, I, when we do my podcast or you guys come on, I, there's people I want to do for you that yeah. I knew in New Orleans. And we're out of this world. Love oh, it. yeah. Good gosh. Well, this has been a, so, such a good time. I enjoyed it so much. No, I can run Clinton out. But this is a fun little thing. And we talked all about process and things like that and how we uh, deal with nerves on Saturday Night Live. It's a good show and all like that. you know. Yeah. So anyway, right. so much fun, Daryl. Really, really interesting. Daryl, thank you. you. All right. Just talk reach soon, out guys. to me. We'll talk soon. Okay. Sounds good. Take care, guys. Bye. Next week's guest will be Lorraine Newman. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Production and engineering led by Greg Holtzman, Richard Cook, Serena Regan, and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. <laughs>